What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're talking about instancing and cloning another part to our Roblox scripting series. Hope you're enjoying it so far. And yes, as a side note, a lot of you guys are already aware of this, but Roblox is removing pretty much every single sound effect ever added to the platform and you're going to have to create your very own sound effects and put them up on the catalog yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think of this update. Personally, I think this is a terrible update, but I'll leave that for you guys to discuss down in the comments. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and get right on into this instancing and cloning. As we do most times, let's go ahead and define these. Um, instancing is creating a brand new game object from scratch. And cloning is spawning in an already created object. That's basically how it works. Let's go ahead and make a new script for today. I'm going to insert a script into service script service. I'm going to call it instance script. I'm also going to go ahead and disable all of the rest of the scripts right now so that they don't um, get in our way. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and learn how to instance. So instances are stored inside of a variable. They don't have to be, but I always recommend storing them inside of a variable. That way you can manipulate them. Um, otherwise, there's not really going to be a whole lot you can do with them. So how do we write an instance? Well, first we create a variable to store it inside of. So we can say local. Um, let's just call it my instance. Okay equals to instance dot new. So this is how you instance something. You write instance dot new, and that will create a brand new thing from scratch. Then you do parentheses and quotation marks. And in here, you put whatever you would like to instance in here. As you can see, there are a ton of things you can put in here. And uh, just to show you what all you can instance, if you head over to view and click on object browser, anything with this icon next to it, this little, I don't even know what this is supposed to be, but this is an object icon. And most of these, not all of them, but most of these you can instance. Or if you want to see another way of doing this, let me close out the object browser. Just do this in the workspace for the example. If you click the plus in the workspace and you scroll down, these are all of the game objects that you can instance, okay? All of these, you can create a brand new one through script. So inside of the quotation marks, we write what we want to instance. Let's go ahead and instance a part for this. And now what's cool, now that we have it stored in a variable, we can write it all we want and we can change its properties. So let's just reparent it. So we can say my instance.parent equals to game.workspace. So this will create a brand new part and put it inside of the workspace. Next, let's go ahead and change the brick color of it. So we can say my instance.brick color equals brick color dot new. We learned about this in our properties episode. And then let's just say red. Red flip-flop. You can do whatever color you want, but I'm just going to do that. And you can change all the properties you want, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm just going to run this. And we can hit run. And you probably won't see anything. And that's because the part is probably right here under this uh, spawn point for you. But if you move the spawn point, as you can see, here is our part. We just created this through script. So here is our brand new part. We could also, through the script, change its name. So we could say myinstance.name equals to uh, and let's just do a quotation marks and say my part and i'm also going to move this spawn point so that we can see it now let's hit run and as you can see we have my part over here and it's named my part so uh, we can do this all we want um, and when we get into positions and c frames we'll be able to move it through script so that'll be fun but um for now, I want to go ahead and just create a ton of these. So I'm going to put that code in a while loop. I'm going to say while wait to do. So every two seconds forever and ever, it's going to create a brand new part. So let's go ahead and get rid of that code and we'll paste it down in here. So copy and paste it and put it in the while loop. And as you can see, it's going to start spawning parts in every two seconds. You're going to have to move these out of the way because it's spawning in the same position. So as you can see, it's spawning a brand new part every two seconds, and they're getting in its... It's it's all kind of getting stacked on top of each other. That's because we never set a position, but we'll learn how to do that in a future part. But uh, yeah, it's spawning these, and it will spawn those forever and ever for every two seconds, so that's pretty cool. So we can, like I said, we can instance any game object, but what if we already have this really cool um, map or something that we want to instance but we can't just instance that because that is not a game object so for example i'm going to open the toolbox uh this is the first time i think we've used this in this whole series but let's just go ahead and grab an npc i'm going to just drag this one right here be careful with models in the toolbox because they can contain scripts that have hacks in them um but i've used this npc before and uh we'll be okay 
if you really want to be safe, just remove any scripts that um, that you find in them. So you can insert a model and then go to the Explorer and search script. And as you can see, we can we have a script inside of our NPC. This is just an animation script, and I know that this is okay. I mean, you want to be careful with this, uh, with this kind of stuff. Okay, so we have our NPC, and now I want to be able to spawn him through code. So I'm going to drag him over the spawn location. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag him inside of replicated storage. So why did I put him in replicated storage, you may be asking. Well, replicated storage is a place where we can store game objects. We can store all kinds of stuff in there, including scripts, um, but... I like to use it for things that I'm going to clone. Um, that's You can also do it in server storage, um, but I'm going to put it in replicated storage, and we're going to be able to clone that, so make a direct copy of it and put it inside of the workspace. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Above the while loop, let's just say local NPC, so we're creating a new variable, equals game.replicated storage. So this isn't like we usually type game.workspace because most of what we've worked with is in there, but this time we're doing game.replicated storage. And then here is .npc, right? Because the NPC is inside of the replicated storage. And what we want to do is we can say colon clone open parenthesis close parenthesis. So this creates a brand new clone of the NPC and it is now stored inside of this variable called NPC. But right now it's just a clone. We want to put it inside of the workspace. So we can say npc.parent equals game.workspace. Now if we run this, you can see that there is an NPC whenever we start the game. But it was in replicated storage. Well, that's because, well, we cloned it and put it in workspace. So it's really, really cool what we can do with instancing and cloning. And we'll get into more advanced stuff with that when we go and make our final game and all that cool stuff. Um, but I know that was a short video, but I do hope you still enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Make sure to head to my Discord, check my Patreon page, all that stuff. Links will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next part. Have a great day, everyone.